Morning guys. Welcome to our first whiteboard session. I'm going to see if I can get kind of good at this and be able to use a little bit of a whiteboard. If you notice, we have a little bit of a pyramid here, right? We have a one, a two, and a three. We're going to call this one the power of, of twos and threes, okay? So you notice you have a, a three set, one, two, and three, right? So I call it the power of twos and threes. And there's a, a mix-up that's involved, okay? So I want you to look at this. Let's say that number one is the new concept the dog is just learning, okay? And we start to convey that thought of what we're trying to teach the dog. And then we have something that the dog does already and is almost mastered, but he's not quite mastered. And then we have something that the dog may have mastered already. That would be number three, okay? So what we do and what, what I do with my, my training principle is that I mix things up, okay? So I come at things in powers of twos and threes and in patterns of twos and threes. And then I end up mixing things up, being aware of what the dog knows already and then what he is the strongest at. And remember that we were talking about the dog learning by success, okay? Dogs learn more so from success and from drive and that reward being given to them because they succeed than they do from failure and from correction, okay? So what we have to do is we have to start to learn how to mix these things up and how to stay in flow with two or three items and we're moving from item to item, we're breaking things with that, yep, and we're doing things to take the dog into drive, that's gonna build the dog's intensity, it's gonna get the dog working better for you because now he's got this reward that he's looking forward to. Okay, there's subjects like dopamine, which is a chemical in the dog's mind that makes them start to um, center better and be more in focus with the work and also um, being crescendo. The dopamine we'll talk about later, but that's another subject, another, another video that we'll do. So yesterday you saw me working the dog with that concept, okay? I had something the dog that was already doing pretty well, he does the bulls pretty well, right? That's what he was mastering, that little puppy. That would be probably his strong point. Or that table, okay? That table's already been conditioned. You see me doing that down. That's already a conditioned thing that's in the dog's psyche that he gets high on because he's been doing it already in a repetition little behavior pattern. If you notice, I have a behavior, a couple of behavior loops going on here, okay? I have the dog hitting the table, and then I say, yep, and the dog comes off the table and then goes back to the table, right? And that high, that high of you taking him and driving that, yep, that uh, explosion release and driving them into food creates that dopamine and gets the dog happy and keeps the dog's drive level up and starts to condition the dog to work with more of an, uh, an energy base, okay? You notice what I was saying, the bridge behavior where I loop the dog around and put him back into my leg, okay? So when you're mixing things up and how you flow through that mix up is, is really the key to my way of training, okay? It creates more drivey dog, gets the dog that's more focused and more in tune with working, and he learns to learn in a better fashion because now you've stretched that dog's mind to be remembering these patterns that you're working on, okay? So we call it the powers of twos and threes. It's something that we're going to be coming back to as we go, and you guys will be able to uh, use it in your training. It is an art, okay? There's a lot of trainers that would think that you want to do things more static and more set with the animal, and they're correct in the relationship to what they're doing when they start to isolate. Remember, we talked about isolating behaviors. So, uh, again, it's the power of twos and threes. There's a lot of little subjects and things that I say terminology-wise, but you're going to start noticing that our terminology as dog trainers has really come a long way, and we now have a really good baseboard of using the same words. In the old days, we didn't have all the videos. We didn't have all this information on the Internet. And these dog trainers were all over the place. And we didn't know what the other dog trainer was doing. We didn't have that ability that we do now with YouTube and with watching these videos to, to learn from each other. Okay, so now our terminology is starting to get a lot more concrete where when I say one, one thing, um, the, the other person is going to understand what I'm talking about because I don't use a set of words that is unique to me because I have a bunch of them because I started way back when before all this stuff came together. And then another trainer down the way is talking about the same thing, but he's using different words and different terminology. So I would like to try to use the same terminology and I actually give my, uh, my customers 
that terminology base and we work from there so they know exactly what I'm talking about as they start to work with their animals. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to ramble on too much longer so we don't have a de dog to demo. As you notice, I'm a little bundled up. It's uh, about 30 degrees <laughs> this morning. It's uh, snowed up in the, in the high country right above us and we're at snow level. If we would have had some rain that would have brought that snow in, we would have had white on the ground. Unfortunately, God didn't shine on us and we didn't get no snow. So I'm kind of like a, a little jilted child that didn't get his <laughs> reward myself. So I'll talk to you guys later. Remember, the powers of twos and threes, and we're going to talk about this subject more as we're working the dogs. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.